Welcome back to The Deep Dive. Everyone's talking about quantum computing, right? It seems like every day there's some crazy new discovery, yeah. you know, pushing the boundaries of what we thought was possible. Well, you listeners sent in some research about a new breakthrough. And uh, oh, wow. let me tell you, it's pretty exciting stuff. It's all about quantum photonics, which if you're not familiar, mm -hmm. it's basically using light, using photons for quantum computing. And researchers over at University of Paderborn, they figured out a way to speed up the analysis of quantum detectors, like yeah. way faster Interesting. using supercomputers. And that could be, well, it could be huge for the whole field of quantum computing, but uh, yeah. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let's bring in our expert to break this down for us. You know, what's really fascinating about this research is it tackles this, this major bottleneck we've had in quantum computing development, right. characterizing quantum detectors. <laughs> it just generates an insane amount of data oh, yeah. and it can take forever to analyze it all. But this new approach, it could really change the game. Okay, so before we get too deep into that, can you give us like a quick, I don't know, quantum photonics 101. What is it? Why are these detectors so important? Sure. So quantum photonics, it's all about using photons, which are basically particles of light okay. for quantum computing. We manipulate these photons to, you know, to represent data and quantum detectors are the tools that we use to yeah. measure and analyze them. Mm. These detectors, they're super sensitive, but but the problem is to characterize them accurately, it produces just mountains of data. And just like trying to, I don't know, understand a person's entire life just by looking at a million selfies. That's a lot of selfies. Yeah, way too much information to process efficiently. That's a great analogy. So how does this research from Paderborn, how does it help with this data overload problem? Well, they've, they've found this clever way to use high-performance computing, okay. paper computers, to analyze that data much, much faster. <laughs> They're using a technique called quantum tomography. It's kind of like um, taking a 3D scan of the detector's behavior. Okay. You know, it lets researchers see exactly how the detector interacts with individual photons. So it's like it's like a super detailed picture of what's going on. Exactly. Yeah. And this means calculations that would normally take days or even weeks can now be done in minutes. Minutes. That's that's incredible. That really does sound like a game changer. But how does this faster analysis, how does it actually impact the development of, you know, better detectors and quantum computing as a whole? So it has this cascading effect, right? Yeah. Faster analysis means we can develop and refine these quantum detectors much quicker. Right. And those improved detectors, they contribute to, well, they contribute to faster advancement of quantum computing technology as a whole. So it's like it's like we were on this long winding road. Uh-huh. And suddenly someone found a shortcut. Yeah, exactly. The path to practical quantum computers, it just got a lot shorter. So it sounds like this research is a major step forward. But are we, I mean, are we anywhere near achieving what they call quantum supremacy? You know, the, the point where quantum computers actually outperform classical computers. That's the big question, isn't it? Yeah. And it's definitely a huge milestone in the field. Yeah. It's the moment when quantum computers can actually solve specific tasks that, you know, that are impossible for classical computers to handle. Right. And the exciting part is that this breakthrough from Paderborn, particularly with these photonic experiments, yeah. it could it could really help us demonstrate quantum supremacy sooner than we thought. Wow, that's that's really exciting. But I'm curious, what makes University of Paderborn so special in the world of quantum research? Mm. What are they are they doing anything else that's that's particularly noteworthy? University of Paderborn, they've consistently been at the forefront of of quantum research and they have this this unique approach. Okay. They combine fundamental research with a, a strong focus on real world applications. Oh. And that blend it allows them to make these groundbreaking discoveries, but at the same time, they're keeping an eye on mm -hmm. how those discoveries can solve, you know, practical problems that we face. Right. So they're not just they're not just building these amazing computers. They're yeah. actually trying to figure out how to make them work for us, you know, in the real world. Exactly. It's like they're they're writing the instruction manual while they're building the machine. Yeah. Great analogy. Okay. So we've covered a lot of ground already. We've looked at the potential of quantum computing, the role of these detectors, right. and this amazing breakthrough from Paderborn. But what does it all actually mean? What does it mean for you, the listener? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay. We'll be right back after. Well, we'll be right back. Sounds good. So before the break, we were talking about this uh, incredible work at University of Paderborn. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the potential of quantum computing. Right, right. But it all seems, you know, 
I think a lot of people hear quantum computing mm -hmm. and they immediately think, you know, Star Trek, science fiction. Yeah, yeah. So let's bring it back down to Earth for a second. How could this research actually, how could it impact, like, you know, the average person? Okay, well, think about it this way. Quantum computing has the potential to completely revolutionize so many like, aspects of our lives, like faster drug discovery. That could mean new and more effective treatments for, you know, diseases that affect millions. Oh, yeah. Actually, you know what? My friend was just telling me about this mm. this new gene therapy that they're developing for this this rare genetic disorder. Right. It sounds super promising, but it's it's taking forever to get through clinical trials. Yeah. Could quantum computing, could that actually speed up that process? Absolutely. Quantum computers could significantly reduce the time it takes to develop new therapies. Imagine being able to analyze Bruh. complex biological processes at the molecular level uh. and then, you know, design these hyper-targeted treatment. Mm -hmm. That kind of precision could lead to breakthroughs mm. in treating diseases like cancer, Alzheimer's, you know, even these rare genetic disorders. That would be incredible. And I re remember you mentioned unbreakable encryption earlier. Is that something that right. could become a reality soon? Quantum cryptography, which uses, you know, the principles of quantum mechanics, it offers this level of security that's basically unhackable. Wow. You know, any attempt to, to intercept a quantum communication, it would actually change the message itself. Oh really? It's alerting both the sender and the receiver to the intrusion. So it's like a it's like a self-destructing message. It sounds connect. like something out of a spy movie. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> but this technology, it's huge for cybersecurity, for protecting sensitive data and, you know, safeguarding privacy in this increasingly digital world. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so we're talking about curing diseases, creating unbreakable codes. This is right. this is all very impressive. But quantum computers still seem kind of, I don't know, mysterious. Is there a way for, you know, for us non-scientists to actually understand how they work? It's definitely a complex field. But one way to think about it mm -hmm. is to think about how classical computers have already transformed our lives, right? Mm -hmm. The Internet, smartphones, social media. Mm -hmm. None of this stuff existed a few decades ago. Right. Quantum computing it's like the next giant leap in that evolution. So instead of just processing, you know, bits of information, these quantum computers can actually help us understand and manipulate like the fundamental building blocks of the universe. Exactly. Quantum computers, they operate on the principles of quantum mechanics. Right. Which govern the behavior of matter and energy at these these tiny atomic and subatomic levels. Okay. That's what allows them to, you know, to perform calculations that are just impossible for classical computers to handle. This is this is blowing my mind a little bit, to be honest. It's incredible stuff. We're talking about a completely new kind of computing power that could yep. open up a whole new world of, of possibilities. Mm. But with all this talk about, you know, the incredible potential, mm. there must be some challenges too, right? What are what are some of the hurdles that researchers still need to overcome? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Quantum computing, it's still a relatively young field. Right. And there are definitely hurdles. One major challenge is scalability. Okay. Building these large, stable quantum computers that can that can handle really complex calculations. Yeah. It's incredibly difficult. The quantum bits or qubits that you know form the foundation of these computers, they're incredibly delicate. Oh, really? They're really prone to errors. Yeah. Maintaining their their coherence and stability. Yeah. It's a major, major engineering feat. It sounds like trying to build a, a house of cards in the middle of a hurricane. Pretty much. <laughs> it requires this incredibly precise control over those qubits, and even the slightest disturbance can cause errors. Wow. Okay. What about what about the cost? I imagine building these quantum computers must be incredibly expensive. You're right. They are very expensive to build and maintain right now. You've got the specialized equipment, the need for cryogenic temperatures, and the expertise required to actually operate them. It all adds up. So we're not all going to have personal quantum computers sitting on our desks anytime soon. Not quite yet. But remember, classical computers, they were once enormous and incredibly expensive, too. Right, right. Over time, as technology advances and production becomes more efficient, we can expect the cost to come down. So it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when we see this technology yeah. become more accessible. Exactly. And research like the breakthrough we're discussing today from, you know, from University of Paderborn, it's helping to accelerate that timeline. This has been a fascinating deep dive, I got to say, into the world of quantum computing. Yeah, it really has. We've gone from the very basics of, you know, 
quantum photonics and detectors mm. to you know, the incredible possibilities and challenges of this revolutionary technology. But before we wrap things up, our expert has one final thought to leave you with. We've talked about, you know, the potential of quantum computing to solve some of humanity's biggest challenges. But it also, you know, it opens up this, this whole new realm of possibilities for scientific discovery. Imagine being able to, like, ask a quantum computer questions about the fundamental nature of the universe. Questions that, you know, are currently beyond our reach. What mysteries could we unravel? That's that's a pretty profound thought. If I had access to a quantum computer, I think I'd I'd want to explore the origins of consciousness. You know, right. like like what makes us aware? What is what is the nature of the self? These are questions that have puzzled philosophers and scientists forever, and a quantum computer might be able to like you know shed some new light on them. What about you? What what question would you ask? Well, that's that's a fascinating one. Um, for me, I I think I'd be curious to delve into the mysteries of dark matter and dark energy. You know, these invisible forces make up the vast majority of the universe, but we know so little about them. A quantum computer, it might be the key to unlocking their secrets and like completely revolutionizing our understanding of, of cosmology. It's it's incredible to think that we might be on the verge of, of such a groundbreaking discoveries. And the research we discussed today, this this breakthrough from University of Paderborn, it's it's playing a vital role in in getting us there. It's like they've given us this powerful new tool to explore the quantum realm and and unlock its potential. Exactly. And it's important to remember that this is just one piece of the puzzle. Yeah. There are, you know, countless other brilliant minds working on all these different aspects of quantum computing, all pushing the boundaries of, of what's possible. It's 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 a truly collaborative effort, a global quest to harness the power of the quantum world. And who knows what what amazing breakthroughs await us in the years to come. Yeah, for sure. And a huge thank you to you, our listeners, for you know, for sharing this fascinating research with us and, and sparking this this incredible conversation. Your curiosity is what drives scientific progress, mm -hmm. and we encourage you to keep exploring and asking questions. Absolutely. If you're interested in learning more about the groundbreaking work happening at Universite Paderborn, be sure to check out their website. They have a, a wealth of information on their research and, and the exciting developments in, in quantum computing. And to all our listeners, keep that curiosity alive because the future of quantum computing is bright and we can't wait to see what wonders it holds. Thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive. 